Morning, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to today's Bible reading. It's May the 2nd today. We began in the fifth month of our one-year Bible reading yesterday. I will also finish the book of Judges very, very soon. For today, though, we'll read from Judges chapters 15 and 16. We'll get into Ruth in maybe a week's time. Today, we'll also begin in John chapter 2. We began John's account of the gospel a couple days ago. We'll begin Psalm 103. And we will continue in Proverbs chapter 14. Those are our readings for today. Before we open our Bibles, let's pray. Lord God, I pray that you bless your word to me and to those who are following along. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So before we go into the Old Testament, let's go to John's account of the Gospel. Starting in verse 1 of chapter 2, it says, The next day there was a wedding celebration in the village of Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the celebration. The wine supply ran out during the festivities, so Jesus' mother told him, They have no more wine. Dear woman, that's not our problem, Jesus replied. My time has not yet come. But his mother told the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Standing nearby were six stone water jars used for Jewish ceremonial washing. Each could hold 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus told the servants, Fill the jars with water. Where the jars had been filled, he said, Now dip some out and take it to the master of ceremonies. So the servants followed his instructions. When the master of ceremonies tasted the water that was now wine, not knowing where it had come from, though of course, of course the servants knew, he called the bridegroom over. A host always serves the best wine first, he said. Then, when everyone has had a lot to drink, he brings out the less expensive wine. But you've kept the best until now. This miraculous sign at Cana in Galilee was the first time Jesus revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. After the wedding, he went to Capernaum for a few days with his mother, his brothers, and his disciples. It was nearly time for the Jewish Passover celebration, so Jesus went to Jerusalem. In the temple area, he saw merchants selling cattle, sheep, and doves for sacrifices. He also saw dealers at tables exchanging foreign money. Jesus made a whip from some ropes and chased them all out of the temple. He drove out the sheep and cattle, scattered the money changers' coins over the floor, and turned over their tables. Then going over to the people who sold doves, he told them, Get these things out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a marketplace. Then his disciples remembered this prophecy from the scriptures. Passion for God's house will consume me. But the Jewish leaders demanded, What are you doing? If God gave you authority to do this, show us a mirac miraculous sign to prove it. All right, Jesus replied, Destroy this temple, and in three days I'll ri raise it up. What? they exclaimed. It has taken 46 years to build this temple, and you can rebuild it in three days. But when Jesus said, this temple, he meant his own body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered he had said this, and they believed both the scriptures and what Jesus had said. Because of the miraculous signs Jesus did in Jerusalem at the Passover celebration, many began to trust in him. But, de but Jesus didn't trust them because he knew human nature. No one needed to tell him what mankind is really like. All right, let's go back into the Old Testament now. We've almost finished the book of Judges. Today we will read from chapter 15, verse 1. Later on, during the wheat harvest, Samson took a young goat as a present to his wife. He said, I'm going into my wife's room to sleep with her, but her father wouldn't let him in. I truly thought you must hate her, her father explained, so I gave her in marriage to your best man. But look, her younger sister is even more beautiful than she is. Marry her instead. Samson said, This time I cannot be blamed for everything I'm going to do to you Philistines. Then he went out and caught three hundred foxes. He tied their tails together in pairs and he fastened a torch to each pair of tails. Then he lit the torches and let the foxes run through the grain fields of the Philistines. He burned all their grain to the ground, including the sheaves and the uncut grain. He also destroyed their vineyards and olive groves. Who did this? The Philistines demanded. Samson was the reply. B. 
because his father-in-law from Timnah gave Samson's wife to be married to his best man. So the Philistines went and got the woman and her father and burned them to death. Because you did this, Samson vowed, I won't rest until I take my revenge on you. So he attacked the Philistines with great fury and killed many of them. Then he went to live in a cave in the rock of Etam. The Philistines retaliated by setting up camp in Judah and spreading out near the town of Lehi. The men of Judah asked the Philistines, Why are you attacking us? The Philistines replied, We've come to capture Samson. We've come to pay him back for what he did to us. So three thousand men of Judah went down to get Samson at the cave in the rock of Etam. They said to Samson, Don't you realize the Philistines rule over us? What are you doing to us? But Samson replied, I only did to them what they did to me. But the men of Judah told him, We have come to tie you up and hand you over to the Philistines. All right, Samson said, But promise that you won't kill me yourselves. We will only tie you up and hand you over to the Philistines, they replied. We won't kill you. So they tied him up with two new ropes and brought him up from the rock. As Samson arrived at Lehi, the Philistines came shouting in triumph. But the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon Samson, and he snapped the ropes on his arms as if they were burnt strands of flax, and they fell from his wrists. Then he found the jawbone of a recently killed donkey. He picked it up and killed one thousand Philistines with it. Then Samson said, With the jawbone of a donkey I've piled them in heaps. With the jawbone of a donkey I've killed a thousand men. When he finished his boasting, he threw away the jawbone, and the place was named Jawbone Hill. Samson was now very thirsty, and he cried out to the Lord, You have accomplished this great victory by the strength of your servant. Must I now die of thirst and fall into the hands of these pagans? So God caused water to gush out of a hollow in the ground at Lehi, and Samson was revived as he drank. Then he named that place the Spring of the One Who Cried Out and it is still in Lehi to this day. Samson judged Israel for 20 years during the period when the Philistines dominated the land. One day, Samson went out to the Philistine town of Gaza and spent the night with a prostitute. Word soon spread that Samson was there, so the men of Gaza gathered together and waited all night at the town gates. They kept quiet during the night, saying to themselves, When the light of morning comes, we will kill him. But Samson stayed in bed only until midnight. Then he got up, took hold of the doors of the town gate, including the two posts, and lifted them up, bar and all. He put them on his shoulders and carried them all the way to the top of the hill across from Hebron. Some time later, Samson fell in love with a woman named Delilah, who lived in the valley of Sorek. The rulers of the Philistines went to her and said, Entice Samson to tell you what makes him so strong and how he can be overpowered and tied up securely. Then each of us will give you 1,100 pieces of silver. So Delilah said to Samson, Please tell me what makes you so strong and what it would take to tie you up securely. Samson replied, If I were tied up with seven new bowstrings that have not yet been dried up, I'd become as weak as anyone else. So the Philistine rulers brought Delilah seven new bowstrings and she tied Samson up with them. She had hidden some men in one of the inner rooms of her house, and she cried out, Samson, the Philistines have come to capture you. But Samson snapped the bowstrings as a piece of string snaps when it is burnt by a fire, so the secret of his strength was not discovered. Afterward, Delilah said to him, You have been making fun of me and telling me lies. Now please tell me how you can be tied up securely. Samson replied, If I were tied up with brand new ropes that had never been used... I'd become as weak as anyone else. So Delilah took new ropes and tied them up with him. The men were hiding in the inner room as before, and again Delilah cried out, Samson, the Philistines have come to capture you. But again Samson snapped the ropes from his arms as if they were thread. Then Delilah said, You've been making fun of me and telling me lies. Now tell me how you can be tied up securely. Samson replied, If you were to weave the seven braids of my hair into the fabric on your loom and tighten it with the loom shuttle, I'd become as weak as anyone else. So while he slept, Delilah wove the seven braids of his hair into the fabric. Then she tightened it with the loom shuttle. Again she cried out, Samson, the Philistines have come to capture you. But Samson woke up, pulled back the loom shuttle, and yanked his hair away from the loom in the fabric. Then Delilah pouted. 
How can you tell me I love you when you don't share your secrets with me? You've made fun of me three times now and you still haven't told me what makes you so strong. She tormented him with her nagging day after day until he was sick to death of it. Finally, Samson shared his secret with her. My hair has never been cut, he confessed, for I was dedicated to God as a Nazarite from birth. If my head were shaved, my strength would leave me and I would become as weak as anyone else. Delilah realized he had finally told her the truth, so she sent for the Philistine rulers. Come back one more time, she said, for he has finally told me his secret. So the Philistine rulers returned with the money in their hands. Delilah lulled Samson to sleep with his head to, with his head in her lap, and then she called in a man to shave off the seven locks of his hair. In this way she began to bring him down, and his strength left him. Then she cried out, Samson, the Philistines have come to capture you. When he woke up, he thought, I'll do as before and shake myself free. But he didn't realize the Lord had left him. So the Philistines captured him and gouged out his eyes. They took him to Gaza, where he was bound with bronze chains and forced to grind grain in prison. But before long, his hair began to grow back. The Philistine rulers held a great festival, offering sacrifices and praising their god, Dagon. They said, Our God has given us victory over our enemy Samson. When the people saw him, they praised their God, saying, Our God has delivered our enemy to us. The one who killed so many of us is now in our power. Half drunk by now, the people demanded, Bring out Samson so he can amuse us. So he was brought from the prison to amuse them, and they had him stand between the pillars supporting the roof. Samson said to the young servant who was leading him by the hand, Place my hands against the pillars that hold up the temple. I want to rest against them. Now the temple was completely filled with people. All the Philistine rulers were there, and there were about 3,000 men and women on the roof who were watching as Samson amused them. Then Samson prayed to the Lord, Sovereign Lord, remember me again. O oh God, please strengthen me just one more time. With one blow, let me pay back the Philistines for the loss of my two eyes. Then Samson put his hands on the two center pillars that held up the temple. Pushing against them with both hands, he prayed, Let me die with the Philistines. And the temple crashed down on the Philistine rulers and all the people. So he killed more people when he died than he had during his entire lifetime. Later his brothers and other relatives went down to get his body. They took him back home and buried him between Zorah and Eshtal, where his father, Manoah, was buried. Samson had judged Israel for 20 years. All right. Psalm chapter 103, a psalm of David. Let all that I am praise the Lord with my whole heart. I'll praise his holy name. Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things he does for me. He forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases. He redeems me from death and crowns me with love and tender mercies. He fills my life with good things. My youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord gives righteousness and justice to all who are treated unfairly. He revealed his character to Moses and his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and merciful, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. He will not constantly accuse us nor remain angry forever. He does not punish us for all our sins. He does not deal harshly with us as we deserve, for his unfailing love toward those who fear him is as great as the height of the heavens above the earth. He has removed our sins as far from us as the east is from the west. The Lord is like a father to his children, tender and compassionate to those who fear him. For he, he knows, knows how, how weak, weak we are. are. He remembers, he remembers we, we are only dust. dust. Our days, Our days on, earth on earth are like grass, like, grass, like wild flowers. Like flowers we, we bloom and die. And die. The, wind blows, the wind blows and we are, and gone. We are gone as though as we have never, been, never been, been here before. But the love of the Lord remains forever with those who fear him. His salvation extends to the children's children. Of those who are faithful to his covenant. Of those who obey his commandments. The Lord has made the heavens his throne. From there he rules over everything. Praise the Lord, you angels, you mighty ones who carry out his plans. 
listening for each of his commands. Yes, praise the Lord, you armies of angels who serve him and do his will. Praise the Lord everything he has created, everything in all his kingdom. Let all that I am praise the Lord. Amen. Proverbs chapter 14, verses 17 to 19 says, Short-tempered people do foolish things, and schemers are hated. Simpletons are clothed with foolishness, but the prudent are crowned with knowledge. Evil people will bow before good people. The wicked will bow at the gates of the godly. And with that being read, we've finished today's Bible reading. Tune in tomorrow, May the 3rd, as we continue in the fifth month of our one-year Bible reading plan. As I mentioned before, we will finish the book of Judges very soon. So tune in tomorrow. Have a great day if you're listening to this in the morning or a peaceful night's sleep if you're listening to this in the evening. And as usual, as we close, we pray. Come soon, Lord Jesus. Amen.